In this screencast, we're going to learn how to draw the cosecant and secant functions. Cosecant is reciprocal of sine, so whenever I want to draw a function involving cosecant, I'm first going to draw the sine function. And the, what we want to look for is everywhere that sine is crossing the x-axis, because that means the y-coordinate is zero. And since cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, the reciprocal of zero is undefined, and so we will draw vertical asymptotes there at these places where sine is, stop that, there, where sine is zero. Okay, now between zero and pi, sine is increasing and decreasing, but it's positive. So the reciprocal will do the opposite. It will stay positive, but it will decrease, and then the reciprocal of 1 is 1, so it shares that point, and then when sine decreases, cosecant will increase. Now sine is decreasing to negative 1 and increasing to 0, so we will increase to negative 1 and then turn around and decrease to infinity, negative infinity. And you just go along wherever sine is, you just draw in the opposite and fit in cosecant. It's as simple as that. If you do transformations to cosecant, do those same transformations to your sine curve first, lay down a dotted sine curve, and then fill in cosecant. The actual cosecant curve is what I've drawn in red. Now that we know how to do cosecant, I bet you can figure out how to do secant. We're going to start with cosine because secant is reciprocal of cosine, we're going to put asymptotes at all the x-intercepts of cosine. And if cosine is increasing to 1, then secant will decrease to 1. If cosine is decreasing to 0, then secant will increase to infinity. If cosine is negative and decreasing to negative 1, then secant will be negative and increase to negative 1. If cosine, cosine yes, is going from negative 1 to 0, then secant will go from negative 1 to negative infinity. And you just fit it in. That's all there is to it, guys.